Wes. Hey, what's up, my brother? Good talks. What's up, yeah. man? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Brian, up to much, man. What are you up to? Not much, bro. Just chilling, man. It's out yeah. here kicking it. You know what I mean? Everyday thing, dog. Summer just kicking in right now. Uh, you know, winter for you guys. Summer over here, so you know, it's starting to get get a little warm over here, bro. But you know, it's 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 about to get really hot, so we're getting ready, preparing for that heat. You know, got the fan blowing behind me. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's just it's everyday life. You know what it is? Yeah, that's crazy because it's summer over there and it's winter over here. And I'll tell you what, man, yeah. it's, it's it's been pretty cold, brother. Has it? Fuck, yeah. man. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having a cold, cold, uh, cold all year round. You know what I mean? I like the heat, dog, but um, just not all the time, dog. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. when it starts in the, in the hundreds. You know, it gets pretty crazy over here where it hits up to like 110, 112, 113. Damn. And then you'll go to the beach that's like 45 minutes away. Well, there's beach all around me, but we go like up north to the beaches, man, and and it'll be like almost 35 degree difference. And that's crazy. You know, one in one area, 45 an hour away, it'd be, you know, 100 or something. And then somewhere else would be like 75, 80 degrees. You're like, damn, that's a big difference, you know? Yeah, man, but, that's a yeah, huge difference. It's, it's, into the summer, it's about to get hot. Yeah. Hey, Wes, looks like you got some new decorations there behind your docks. Hey, you know what it is. That's my hangout <laughs> right there. Oh, uh, that's so cool, G. <laughs> I know, I know this IC, you the motherfucking G from day one, but <laughs> Coco, dog, if I would have seen Coco back in my days, it would have been over. It's a rat. No, <laughs> Coco, man, she, she's, been the, she's been the love of my life for a very long time. I don't care how old she gets. She's gonna be she's gonna be mine forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what have you been up to, Wes? Not much, my G. Just fucking, you know what I mean? Just doing my thing, dog. Just um, you know, fucking getting in with this music. You know, I took a little break for a minute, so uh just started getting back into it again, doing this music shit. Uh got a couple things in the works and stuff. Just life, dog, you know what it is? Everyday thing, man. Just fucking trying to trying to stay on top of this shit you know what i mean you, you don't stay on top of it the, and be consistent people forget about you so you got to keep your you know foot on their necks foot on the gas pedal yeah you got to keep that wood in the fire yep got to you know keep that mean? foot heavy that's right uh, yeah so you know just everyday things same same shit you know what i mean just trying to just trying to keep it going dog keep it rolling yeah and i did see you drop that 100 bars as well Oh my boy. <laughs> so you know, you already know what it is with that dog, you know what I mean? Fucking uh that's man. We'll get into that right now, but yeah, dog. I had to drop something for the people, bro. I remember when we were talking about it, I just told you like, hey man, I feel like we gotta do something, to keep it like the old school ways, you know, like when game dropped the three hundred bars of running. Uh he had an artist when uh that he signed for a little bit called your boy i remember he came out that's where i actually got the name from the 100 bars of death he actually did one himself called 100 bars of death and he he raps on a bunch of uh or he actually it's just actually just one beat and that's what goes in on it and um i wanted to do something like that and what better way than to sit there and actually do it on some ice cube beats yeah. i actually wanted i actually i remember talking to you in the beginning about it I wanted to do a mixture of different old school West Coast legends. Remember, I was thinking like Snoop, Dog Pound, Ice T. I mean, I was thinking some like old school beginning nineteen fucking late eighties, early nineties shit. But um, I just thought about it. I was like, you know what, Ice Cube. You know, I wanted to pay homage to you know one one of my favorite rappers. So uh, to stop, what, what better way than to you know just get a couple beats? You know, actually, it was a total of six. Get some of his bangers, some of the ones that he did at Westside Connection, some of the main ones that people know, and you know, had you do your magic, put your put your little twist to it to the beats, and uh, man, and I, it, you know, what's crazy about that is I didn't expect that to come out the way it came out. You know what I mean? I remember we were talking about it. You know, at first it was just an idea. Then you you did the beats all right then and there. We lined them all up. Then you sent it to me, and it was still cool, but you know, it was just like a ref, you know, a ref of the of what you gave me. And then I wrote to it. I remember I wrote that shit in two days. We we well, I mean I wrote and recorded it in two days. But um 
Yeah, I just remember I, I listened to it and then I gave it to you and then you started mixing it. And then when you sent me the final dog, <laughs> just like all the volume, you like, man, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough, man, what you did with that track, bro. Like, uh, yeah, you, the little things do so much, you know, people that don't really like love the music the way we love it probably wouldn't understand. They probably hear it the same way, you know, that we hear, you know, when we hear, when we hear the final product. Like they probably don't know the difference between a reference and a master. You get what I'm saying? But like the volumes, <laughs> man, this one you got all the volumes cracking at the same levels, and then you're adding your drums, taking out the drums in certain parts, adding the effects, and then you know, I'm man, just the whole piece together at the end was great. And then when I added the visualizing with the lyrics, I mean, I got that from you, my G. I know a lot of people are starting to do the lyric shit now. You know what I mean? But. I've seen you when you were doing a couple for me, did some for Jack Allen, linked up and shit. So I was like, man, I, I want to try to get into that. And then I have this app, you know what I mean? It kind of like puts a, you know, helps me out a lot with the lyrics. You know, you got to fix a couple things here and there. But once I started putting all that shit together and I started using old videos, you know, from videos that I've already done, uh, just to have in the background for people to, to look at while the lyrics are playing so you can see what I'm saying, man. It all came together so smooth, my G. I just, man, I couldn't thank you enough, man. You, we, we killed that shit, dog. And I fucked up a little bit. I was kind of a little impatient. You know, I, I told everybody we were going to give them two weeks, you know, <laughs> just on my website to go look on my website and, um, you know, to view it on there. You know, I, I waited a week and I, and I ended up making the video live on YouTube, man. But as we go on, that shit going to change. We're going to be more stricter. It's going to be, you know, it ain't going to get out released on YouTube until the fans that fuck with me go to the website and view that shit first. Because that's what it's done for. It's done for the people that fuck with me, fuck with you, and that are really down with us. You know what I mean? If you're going to fuck with me and my music, then I'm going to fuck with you and I'm going to give you some exclusive shit. You know what I mean? Let you hear that shit first. And shit, maybe I won't even put that shit out on YouTube. Maybe I just keep that shit on the website. You know what I mean? That gets more people to go to the website. You know, of course, we'll put some on YouTube, but uh, I remember talking to you with it and I see the whole out, the, you know, the whole plan laid out. And uh, yeah, man, that's one way, you know, I, I think we should um, connect with the fans more. You know what I mean? Make it more of a personal deal. You know, it's not just like I'm throwing out music for anyone. And no, nah, like you fuck with me. I fuck with you. Here's some shit. You could download it, put it on your shit, you know, and keep it. You know what I mean? It's for you. You know what I mean? And. If we feel like putting it out on YouTube because we wanted to get more exposure, then, you know, maybe we'll do that. But maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just keep it for the fans. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man. So, I mean, as of right now, it's on the website. You go to the west1987.com. Click on 100 Bars of Death. You'll see the video. Um, check it out, man. Uh, and you can actually get the track and all that stuff, too, as well. So, um, just go to the website, check it out. Or you can go on YouTube. Go on YouTube. Does it is it on your page too? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, if you go on my YouTube, the West nineteen eighty seven, just go on there. It's probably the latest video. It's actually my preview video. So as soon as you go to my channel, it's gonna play. So, yeah, man. As far as that dog, uh, I couldn't be more happy. Thanks, Stoko. Yeah, hey, you're Stoko very welcome. Kid. You're welcome. Yeah, we got more in the works, dog. As a matter yeah. of fact, I was gonna tell you. I want to do Tupac, dog, but I feel like so, like, I can't touch. Uh, I, I get, like, a little uh, when I see people touch Tupac beats, you know what I mean? Because Tupac's just legend, dog, you know what I mean? He's a legend. I feel like the same thing with Biggie, you know what I mean? Like, maybe it's just me being biased because, you know, those are, you know, like, favorite artists of mine. But um, I kind of wanted to do a mashup with Tupac, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a, some dope ass Tupac beats and ah uh, man that was got never ending hits you know what I mean so maybe we could do something with like a Tupac mashup you know if we could find a couple four or five beats and do the same thing with Tupac or maybe we'll do something different with uh you know maybe my favorite artist and mix it all together and you know but we gotta do some more shit like that you know I, it seems like the people really fucked with that type of shit and we need to bring it back my boy. That's we need right. to bring that shit back, G. All this fucking new shit that's out now, and no diss to the motherfucking new people coming out and all that. Salute to them people that are coming out. I love how hip hop, you know, uh, um, the evolution of it and how it just, you know, keeps changing. 
But that West Coast shit is where it's really at, my boy. You know, that's what I thrive <laughs> on. That's what I grew up on. That's what you grew up on. That's what the people love to hear from Cali. From when you hear music from Cali, I know they know about the new artists and shit, dog. But when you think about Cali, you think about palm trees, weed, lowriders, bad bitches, Chicanos, blacks, cribs, bloods, you know, cholos. Yeah. You think about that West Coast shit, dog. You know, they think about gang, Dr. Dre, Snoop. You know what I mean? So you want to hear that old school West Coast shit, dog. And that's what I thrive, dog. You know what I mean? That's what you thrive on the beats. So, you know, we I, I said we just stick to that shit and, you know, keep releasing the 100 bars type deals. Like, you know, maybe once a month or every other month, you know, keep the fans happy, dog. Because the ones that appreciate that shit, they, you know, they appreciate it. They hit me up in the DM. I see the, I see the comments. You know, I see the people showing love, dog. So, um, I, I'm thinking I was I was gonna talk to you about this, you know, personally one on one. But hey, why not give it to these motherfuckers on the Discord? You know what I mean? Let them know like what it is. You know, yeah. you know maybe we should do something like that for the peeps. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what's up, Wes. Hey, and to piggyback off that, salute. It was a great job what you did. Hundred bars. Hell you yeah! It from the beginning Hell to yeah. the end. You held Did you have up. faith in me? Did you have faith of in course. me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was dope, dog. I'm telling you, bro. Like, down to everything that you do, dog. I mean, you really put a lot of time in your shit. You can tell when people put time and stuff in, in, in shit, bro. I'm a very picky person when it comes to my music. So when I when 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 I don't got much to say. You doing your shit, you know what I mean? Even if it's only like two things I'm asking for, cause trust me, you can ask some of these people that done videos for me. I won't say no names, but I've sent lists this long, bro. I've sent essays, you know what I mean? And I ain't talking about the Mexicans with Lopes. I'm talking about, you know, point, point, point. I'm talking about like 20 things to fix in a video. You know what I mean? You know, so when you when I ain't asking for much to fix, dog, yeah, you're killing it, bro. You, you we've been working with each other for some time now, so you kind of know where my shit is at, dog. So, uh, man, you know, you and a couple, of, maybe like one other person, you know, I'm able to fuck with, and you know, they already know my sound, how I like my shit. So it's dope when I got that connection like that, dog, because you know what I mean. There's not too much that needs to be done, you know. You're a master at your shit, dog. I'm a master at my shit. You get two masters together, you get a masterpiece, my G. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and as far as that goes, dog, not only are you killing it on the beats and the mixing and all that, you're killing it on the merch. My yeah, my boy. Yeah, yeah. Thank oh, you, brother. People don't know about the people don't know about the website, dog. Is my boy Loki over here is a triple threat, quadruple threat, making beats, mixing and mastering. Creating designs, art covers, website. This guy making website. This guy made my website. You know what I mean? So um after he made my website, man, we started talking about like, you know, what can we do more to get out to the people? And we started doing the merch thing. I told him my idea of the merch. Um most people know me with Westonomics, you know what I mean? That's usually what I roll with. If you see back there, above Coco, that's one of my old designs up there. And that was like one of the first shirts that I made. And, you know, um, I started branching off that, made some shirts with my name, The West and Westonomics. Westonomics is still my shit. That's my brand. That's my I, I got a whole I mean, man, I don't want to fucking take up so much time, but I could tell you what Westonomics comes from. I could tell yeah, you. What, tell us, because I remember you did break this down for me one time. Yeah, so it'd, yeah. it'd be cool if you just broke it down again, please, bro. Yeah. OK, well, in a nutshell, bro, I'll try to keep it in a nutshell. Westonomics, bro, the way I came up with that was when my name is the West, right? So there's, I could break this shit down in three different ways, but I'm going to try to do it in just one little nutshell way. And, um, you know, at first I used to go by a different name, but when I changed my name to the West, it just happened to be like it was, it was meant to be because, you know, my family comes from the old West. They come from, you know, in 1785 back in California when it was still Mexico. You know, and that's, they call that the old West. You know what I mean? Well, that was Mexico. But then after California, it was made into California and the cowboy days and Indian days, they used to call that the old West. You know what I mean? So, you know, coincidence is old West. My family's from the old West. We come from West LA. You know what I mean? I've always lived on like the West end of shit and everything. So, and I rep the West and my music's West coast. So 
I was like the West. And then I was like, hell yeah. So I like was riding with the West and I wanted a brand, you know, I wanted a, I didn't want it to be my name, you know, even though you could use the West as like a, like a brand kind of in a way, but I wanted to brand something. I just didn't know what to do. So I kept thinking like, what could I do? And, um, I actually started thinking back of like when, you know, with gangster rap and one day, you know, I think it was, um, uh, the NWA stuff. I was watching a documentary one day and they were talking about how like the birth of West coast gangster rap was 1987. And I was like, yo, that's my year. My year is 1987. And I'm like, yo, that's dope. You know, like the birth the birth of West coast gangster rap was when I was born. It was actually before that. Cause you had ice tea. And all these fools that were coming out, you know, before 87. But when you talk about the birth of West Coast gangster rap, N.W.A. dropped their album in 1987. You know what I mean? So when they dropped that album, that shit went worldwide. Everybody knew about it. You know what I mean? So that was 1987. I was like, damn, that's the birth. So I was like, how can I, how can I like brand something from 1987? So I just started thinking, like, I started looking up shit. I actually looked up 1987 and what happened in that year. And in, in the United States, when the stock markets crashed, that, 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 that was a big thing that happened. Um, and it happened in 1987 as well. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. And that was the same time around the crack era, you know, when the crack era was going on. And that was when Reagan was in president, was the president. And then I was like, Reagan. And then I, they started talking about how, um, there was the Reaganomics era, and I was like, Reaganomics, West Coast, the West, <laughs> Westonomics, and I was yeah. like, perfect. I'm like, that's it, Westonomics, and I was like, I couldn't it, like, it just clicked for me, like, yo, that's my shit. That's what I'm gonna name it, Westonomics, and I'm gonna roll with that. And the meaning of that was, it, everything I just told you is the meaning. You know, it's just. It comes from that era. When you say Westonomics, you think about uh, when you break it down, it comes from the era of the 80s, late 80s, you know, the year when Reagan was there, the year when West Coast gangster rap was born. You know, that was the year I was born. You know what I mean? So it just all went in, the, in, in that scene. And for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, I always see 1987. That's like a, like, I feel like that could be a brand. But, like, I see that year a lot. You know, it's always that year is put out a lot. Like when I see movies or like shirts and there was a lot of things that went down in 87. And um, I was just like, man, that's perfect, dog. Like, you know, what I mean, 1987, the year I was born, you know, Westonomics, you know, I, I just made it mine. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much how I came up with the brand name Westonomics. And it's it's you, when you think about when I say Westonomics, I'm telling you pretty much where I come from. And when, when you dig deep and you find the meaning of it, when you watch these videos and I explain it, you understand it now. Most people just say, oh, Westonomics, tight name, you know? But you want people to ask about it, get in tune with you, understand who you are, what you represent, you know? And what better way than to put a, 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 a name out there that's like slaps you in the face and makes people ask what that is. That's and right. it gives you the opportunity to tell you who the hell you are, you know, and tell you about your brand and what it is that you do, dog. So, yeah, my G, that's pretty much how I did the Westonomics thing, dog. But you know, like I was saying, fool, I, you know, I did the Westonomics and I was pushing that for a minute. People fucked with it, too. You know, I still going to fuck with the design and still push it out there like that. I got stickers to this day, you know what I mean, um, that, you know uh have that logo or that saying you know the westonomics on it so i still push that but i wanted to push something else i wanted to push because i've heard a couple people be like ah westonomics like yeah you know and you, you know it's cool i know not everyone's gonna fuck with it but i wanted something different again and um i've been a big pusher for my culture for a very long time and um sucks that when i was pushing it seven six years ago or even more people weren't really paying attention listening to it doug you know what i mean um i was trying to push 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 but people weren't listening but you know hey man i don't care because now it is now people are really listening to our culture now uh you're seeing a lot of people embrace the mexican culture a lot of people are 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 are, are fucking with us and our movement especially out here in cali right now 
Cali shoes right now in the Mexican uh, rap, you know, uh, or Chicano rap. Um, I mean, not even Chicano rap, just rap period. We got a lot of Mexicans coming up, a lot of young homies, you know, coming up Mexicans. And, you know, you got lefty, uh, lefty gunplay, uh, Bravo to bag chaser, rest in peace when he signed sway peso. Um, fuck man. I can name a, uh, drummer boy, King little G. I mean, there's a lot of these fools and they're dope, dope artists, bro. And this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for our culture to get accepted like this. And the fact that we're getting accepted like this is dope. Even though when I was trying to push it and it wasn't, fuck it, dog. It's getting pushed now and I'm fucking riding it. I love it. It's dope. So I wanted to do something that was going to represent my culture. And I've been going by, you know, I, I've been doing a couple series of these uh, EPs. And um, it was actually... Uh, the the name was El Oeste, you know, which stands for yeah, the yeah, West yeah. in Spanish. And I didn't think about it then, but when we were talking after the when we got the website made, um, I was like, damn, that would be a dope name, El Oeste. You know, especially right now, because people are fucking with the culture and all that. And I was like, you know, and as far as like artwork, you know, we could do like the name L O S and shit like that, but at the same time, embrace West Coast shit like the old school West Coast gangster era. But at the same time, Rick, I could represent my culture too. And one of the first designs I told my boy, I was like, hey, you know, it would be dope if we did like, you know, a lot of people like to mimic the Death Row, the Death Row Records fucking logo. Yeah. And I've seen a couple of people kind of mimic it or use it. And a lot of people like wearing the Death Row shirt. You know what I mean? I was like, hey, it would be sick if I did like a, like an Aztec warrior, like a chief or some shit on a throne, you know what I mean? And just sitting down on the throne and like, kind of like on some, uh, you know, you know, like you, 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 when I told you, you kind of understood what I meant. So your first mock-up you did for me, it was just like the death row, but it was the actual, the, the same guy in the death row chair. And then the head where, you know, you actually switched out like with like an Aztec head like a warrior, you know, uh, face. And that was dope. I was loving it. But then, then you told me, hold up, Togo. I got you, my G. <laughs> you, you whipped up some more shit with a, with more of a Aztec style to it. Like you took away the throne. You took away the death row chair and put, uh, put an Aztec throne. Then you put the chief sitting in the throne. You know, and the whole man, that shit's dope. Just wait till y'all motherfuckers see that shit. <laughs> if you guys want a quick little glimpse, you can go on my website and check it out, man. You'll see some of the designs that you know we're we're planning on coming out with. You know, and all but my boy Tokes right here, man. This guy over here, he you know, I tell him what I want and he comes out with the product. You know, I got a couple other shit too that I got from the homie Drip Smoke, who was actually the guy who designed the LOS the three cover. Um, he's going to whip up some different designs too. So uh, I'm kind of happy to be able to get you and the homie to mix together. And, you know, we're going to try to come up with four dope ones, which I already know the two that I want from you to, to, to put out and then get one, two from him and then put those four out. And then the ones that we have all together, then right after, you know, kind of, we, we don't know exactly how we're going to do it yet, but I feel like maybe, you know, kind of do like a, you know, one drop, you know, with like four designs, a couple months go by, do another drop with another four, you know, and let that be like um, just those one time prints, you know what I mean? So if you get that shirt, not only are you repping and you, you'll, you're you going to get something with the shirt, we're going to try to do something where you get the shirt, you get a song and uh, you, you you get some download shit. We don't know exactly, but we on we, we on some marathon shit. Rest in peace and empty hustle, dog. But, you know, that's where I'm getting my game from. You know what I mean? I'm trying to do some shit like that. You know, and Nipsey Hustle did his thing with the Crenshaw album when he sold his album for a hundred bucks. Everyone thought he was crazy. You know, a hundred bucks for the album. Everyone was like, yo, who's gonna buy the album for a hundred bucks? You know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's all about the people that fuck with you and the fans, dog. And he did that. People got it. He did his personal show for them. And then you got all this other extra shit. So I want to keep his, you know, his his legacy alive by trying to do the same shit, you know, and, and kind of do something like that on my end. You know, whether it's, you know, a shirt, a fucking um, or some some unreleased music that comes with it, uh, fucking discord video chat. You know what I mean? You know, put a package together and then sell it for one price. And have people fuck with us. So, yeah, man. Um, 
the L O S the brand, man. You got that's something you got got, got to look out for, man, because that shit gonna be hot, dog, and not even just my shit. You know what I mean? We we ain't just got the L O S the brand to look forward to. My boy Low Key over here killing the game. He killing the <laughs> game right now with uh, you know, all the merch, bro. Like, I, my 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 question to you, when you're helping me doing all this shit, and you know I'm giving you these ideas. Like, how do you get these ideas for your stuff, bro? Like, I see some of the stuff that you release, bro. You're releasing shit every fucking three days, bro. Like, <laughs> and I go on your page and I see all these designs and I'm like, bro, I just, I just can't. I, it's, man, it's crazy the shit that you come up with, dog. Like, down from the, you know, the usual suspects one, then the little funkers, and then the funk gang. Bro, people need to fucking put more eyes on your shit, dog, because... And push that shit where you at, dog. And I, a lot of people fuck with that, dog. I mean, I, what's up with that, dog? Like, what's your plans with the merch that you got going on? Man, I, pretty much I'm just having fun doing it, bro. Our culture, we're inspired by your culture too. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. So I grew up around, you know, my big cousins, big bros, and they were just dressing like you, you know, with the dickies, yes. with the chucks. You know, with the flannel yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, I noticed, I noticed that, my G. When I see the, they look just like us. You know what I mean? Some of <laughs> some of you, some of those guys, I man, they looking just like some of my uncles and shit. Just, just a little <laughs> more fancy guy. You know what I mean? Y'all look a little more higher than us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and that was just, um, yeah, that was just the way of growing up. So, I got a line coming out, and it's called <clears throat> Hood Originals, right? Is it yeah. Hood Originals? Hood yeah. Originals, yeah, man. So that's so just you got so, you got so many you got so many brands bro. you can't even you can't even remember which ones you got you got like four right now right? <laughs> yeah hood originals so um that's just from what I seen growing up in life the big homies the big brothers you know the OGs you know from yeah, where yeah. I'm from so I uh, you know we we look like yous we're inspired by yous but we just have our own take on it. Yeah, we, I implemented uh, Taragos in there. Pig on the spit, Duno Buwaka. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I was when I seen that one with the pig, I was like, damn, this one could do one of like, I was just thinking in my head, like a, like a backyard Chicano theme, like, you know, homies at a table playing dominoes, an uncle in the back on the grill cooking carne asada. I was thinking the same <laughs> shit, Don. Like, yeah. You know, like a homie at a grill cooking carne asada or some shit, you know what I mean? Uh, man, you know what I mean? I'm telling you, dog, it's crazy how our cultures fucking mix and intertwine with each other, bro. It's We have the same background story, just different locations, dog. You know, mm. we were both fucking invaded by fucking the Europeans, Britons, whatever you want to call it, the white men. And they they took over our lands, took over shit. And, you know, um, you know, it, it just so happens that when I was reading about your guys' culture, you know, a lot of you guys are in the landscaping shit too back in the day that's what you guys and that's where our culture comes in from you know a lot of people know us for being gardeners you know what i mean and starting shit like that and it's crazy man just the stories of man they they intertwine with each other and the, the the way i mean the only difference is is that you guys um you guys i think a lot more your guys's culture kind of follows when it comes to like the gang shit you guys are more on the blood and crypt shit you know, but as far as the dressing, the style, the music, it trips me out because I hear some of uh, like the homie Mr. Sick, dog. I trip out on some of the music he plays. And <laughs> you don't always be bumping that wet, like West Coast shit. He definitely be bumping like oldies, you know what I mean? He be playing some old school shit. And I'm like, damn, man, that's crazy. Like, that's our culture too, dog. Like, that's what we bump. Like, when I grew up, I said it before on a couple of the other uh, pod, uh, podcasts or discords with you, is, you know, we grew up on that funk and oldies and, you know, Marvin Gaye and, you know, all that shit growing up and all the 80s and 70s music. And it was tight to see Mr. Sick bumping that shit, dog, because it shows that, that our cultures are so much alike, dog, whether it's Mounties, Tocos, Usos, dog. All you Pacific Islanders, man, that you guys are just like us. Yeah, and as far as that hood originals, man, that that shit, that shit's yeah. crazy, my boy. You got yeah. you got some shit coming up right there. Thank you, Doko, man. With the hood originals, I just wanted to do something that I seen growing up. You know, all the all the older boys, the big homies, my uncles, you know, my bros' friends. Um, 
and, and I guess it's more than merch for me. Like it comes down to the beats too. Like with the yeah, West yeah. Coast beats, you know, these gangster beats. Um, yeah, man. I just feel like you you played um, yeah a big role in in what I do. You know, and yeah. can't speak for everybody else, but I'm just speaking on my side. Like I, I've been influenced. I watched uh you know growing up as a teenager wanted to be a vato local you know watching all those mm-hmm. gangster movies so yeah man love your culture bro yeah bro it's not just you too dog it's not like you're like let you're like you're in your own little island with it dog because i mean i mean like i said i mentioned mr sick you know he's brought up the movies dog he's brought up blood and blood out he's brought up colors <laughs> he's brought up american me even the homie e dog that fool used to bring up that shit with me too on calls and yeah. when uh when we would talk about that shit you know it, it was crazy because i know you guys are in different areas and shit you know so uh, we branch out and it's it's just it's not a certain race it's all you guys you guys are in the same boat with us, dog. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's dope. I fuck with I fuck with you guys' culture big time, dog. It's Mexican and, and you know, Mexican culture and, and y'all culture, man. That you guys' culture is fucking dope to me. You know, one day I'm gonna have you teach me the haka, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna get with it, my boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get with it. I'm gonna stick your tongue out, get wild and all that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Wes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? We're gonna so, get that in one day. Yeah. So on those hood originals. Um, I've implemented our culture, so you're gonna see a guy with the pig on the spit behind him. You're gonna see the yeah. Taragos, the vans that we, our family cars, you know, our family vehicles, I should say. Um, yeah. The houses, the palm trees, the taro leaves. So implemented that as well because that's what I seen growing up. I guess it's the same thing as beats. I get to express my thoughts and my feelings through illustrations, bro instead of just yeah. like with the music so yeah man it's been a pretty cool couple of months you know trying to um, teach myself educate myself on this t-shirt design thing because i've just yeah, pretty yeah. much stepped into it in a few months but i want to yeah and shout out to everybody that supported me too like getting yeah, yeah. getting t-shirts and and hoodies and that i, I appreciate it and it, it means hey, a lot to me. LOS the four, you know, uh, LOS the one was just LOS the LOS the two was down with the polys. LOS the three um, was uh, Blood of a Nastic. And fourth, I was going to wrap up the LOS the series with Mi Vida, which was going to be about my life. You know, but the thing I like about the LOS the series was it was more of a personal thing for me. You know, LOS the one was about you know uh kind of giving you an introduction of the west um bringing you that west coast raw fucking cypress hill fucking old school west coast i mean like you know checkmate was ridiculous full i mean i had that old school dog pound feeling you know um then i had the uh, the one with the homie trouble p that was on some like cypress hill type shit i mean it was dope bro i wanted you to i wanted you to get a feel of the of that raw west and then down with the polys of the west and two you know that one i just wanted to pay homage to to you guys you know what i mean you guys were you know accepting me with open arms and um i wanted to pay back to to you guys and future nothing but you kind of artists you know what i mean uh you your toko i wanted to get you know mr sick who's maori and then you know he was in there too i wanted him uh, you know representing for the samoans you know and then we had jack you know what i mean so it was just a big uh big big thing for the polynesians you know what i mean i wanted to show people out here because polys are big out here too that i fuck with the culture you know what i mean so that was a personal thing i wanted to do you know just to pay homage to to, to you guys because i see a lot of us and you you know what i mean so and a lot of you guys are in us too as far as you know the way we live and shit. so that one was, that was a reason for the los the two and then LOS to three, like I said, I mean, I've always pushed for my culture and I just wanted to do a whole album where it wasn't really about me. It was more so where my culture comes from, where we come from, how we live, you know, how we got to where we are today, you know, and I wanted to shed light on, you know, like the farm workers, you know, um, 
what they go through you know how how we're really strong-minded hard-working people and where our blood comes from and even though it was a sad story what happened to us and how our lands were taken and stuff we still make it a beautiful thing dude you know uh shout out to jack allen but it's a beautiful thing you know what i mean <laughs> it, you know the way how everything comes together you know they came and took over but you know um uh, in the end you know uh when you look back uh you, you see the strong the strong power from you know our culture's mind man we don't we don't we don't bow down to nobody we're warriors we stick it through and I wanted people to see that. So that was the whole reason for LOS to three LOS to four. I'm giving you my life. Um, my plan on that was to just come and bring you from the beginning. And when I was born, you know, that's where the first track awake comes from. Um, that track was going to be, or oh, is because it's already done. But um, that track was from the moment I was born to like, you know, growing up as a little kid and seeing what, it, what life was like. So um, I wanted to just kind of, give you a story of my life you know and, and i want to kind of plan it like that throughout the whole ep and give you stages of my life so awake is going to be like that then we got another track that's on some like nwa type shit you know what i mean that one's going to be me yeah. growing up in school and then we're going to have another one where it's like um life after school kicking it with the homies and getting into the music and then we're going to have another track and then i'm going to end it off end the track off with uh um where I'm at now, you know, as far as music guys and, you know, where I plan on going, you know, the intro, we haven't even finished the intro, but the intro is a story itself, bro. You can just close your eyes and listen to it. And it takes you back to 1987, my G. And, and, and I remember when I was telling you all the things that I wanted to implement, man, just to give you guys a little fucking sneak peek. You know, I won't give you all the details, but we started it off with my pops inside the living room doing tattoos with his homies. And he's watching Martin in the background. And how my uncle did this shit, dog? I don't know, my boy, but this <laughs> fool, this fool got the whole tattoos and and Martin playing in the background. And, you know, we have to still get some acting. I still got to get my mom to get on the mic, or, you know, but... Uh, yeah, man, my mom breaks through. Oh my God, my, you know, I gotta go to the hospital. I think I got, you know, I, I'm about to have my baby, this and that. My dad goes, oh shit, all right. Gets in the car, takes out to the hospital, hops out. My, you know, he goes in, my mom goes into the doctor's office. They, they gotta do a uh, C-section on her because that's how I was born. And they you know, they do the C-section, I'm born, and they say, oh, dang, you got a healthy baby boy. What's his name? Oh, uh, we're gonna call him you know, the West, or maybe my name, who knows how we're going to do it. And then it goes into the song awake, you know, and then awake comes in boom. So, uh, I, as you hear that, you don't really, it, maybe it's a little too much, but man, when you guys hear the intro dog, my boy's got like 75% of the shit done. Uh, all that's left to do is just the, really the ending of it and all the acting to it. But man, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you can just close your eyes. And when you come from that era, you know what's up if you know you know you know what i mean yeah. so you hear that shit and you're like damn that's just dope but uh if you don't come from that era you still get that you know picture painting feeling you know of, of what you're listening to and that's that's where my biggie comes from dog biggie was a storyteller you know what i mean and um that's that's kind of what i wanted to go through is is give you that storytelling shit you know what i mean and that's why I thrive at too, dog, is the storytelling. So I just want to tell you my life, dog. That's what LOS the four is all about, dog, is my life. And um this LOS this shit, it wasn't the, the these mixtapes or EPs that I put out with the LOS they there there's bangers on there. Don't get me wrong. There's not there's tracks that you could bump and dope shit. But it was more so for teaching you guys, you know, the fans and and just telling you about me, who I am, my culture. When you slap these motherfuckers on and you bump them, you get a taste of who I am. You ain't got to ask me questions and shit. You just got to play the EPs and you kind of know who the fuck I am. You know where I come from. And the LOS to four is going to seal it all up, tell you exactly where I come from. And then when you get the, when you see the EP LOS to four and you listen to it all the way from beginning to end, all the other EPs make sense. You know what I mean? That's what I got coming. I got that in the works. I got other shit too in the works, 
Um, I got a couple songs that I got coming uh, with the homie Anthem Menace. And um, uh, a couple of those songs are produced by the homie Chops. So I got I got a couple singles coming out. Um, but the big one's the LOS to four. That one's that's the one that we're working on right now. We already got a couple tracks done. Actually, we had a song called Empire that was gonna uh um was gonna be a part of the EP. I don't know if it still is or what we're gonna I think we were talking about maybe doing like a special drop with that, like kind of like what we did with the 100 bars of running, right? Yeah, our 100 bars of death. So um yeah, I'm thinking as far as uh, with that track, we might we're gonna release that one. That one's already done too. So, um, you guys might get something another treat for that one too. Yeah. And that one we're gonna be a little bit more uh, more strict with that one. That one's gonna be you know, we might not even release it on YouTube. We might we might just depending on how that how it goes, you know. But it's for sure gonna be up on the website. You'll for sure be able to fucking download it and all that shit. Uh, maybe I could do a quick little video for it, or maybe we'll just do another visualizer type deal, um, or some shit. You know, we'll figure out something. But um, that's 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 gonna be one of the newest ones. It's called Empire. Um, so um, we're gonna be putting that one out. But yeah, man, as far as music goes, dog, it's always in the works. Always got something going. So um, that's that's the one. Make sure you guys are look out for that one. LOS to four. That's gonna be coming soon. Don't know when exactly but i'll keep you up to date we'll be posting empire don't trip we'll be we'll be coming out pretty soon so we're gonna be consistent with it we ain't gonna lag we ain't gonna be gone for a long time so you know we're gonna keep it rolling you know what i mean and in the midst of that los the four will be getting made and you know um, when all this shit starts dropping it's gonna be dropping as a matter of fact i forgot i got a song dropping on friday so uh um i got something dropping on friday called the click it's with me and the homie ravy and um it's uh with a couple of the homies out there in the ie and, um we got a song it's produced by the homie chops so it's called the click watch out for that one that's dropping on all platforms um that one's coming out on friday so uh friday i forget what the date is today but that's this if you're watching this right now that means it's coming up this friday coming up so make sure you guys stay in tune that's dropping on friday the click the homie Ravy. Yeah, the click. So yeah, my boy. So I, I kind of wanted to get you sideways and hit you with a curveball. If you don't mind, if you don't mind that I get you with that, you mind if I hit you with something real quick? Yeah, go ahead, man. What's the uh, side ball, yeah. homie? Uh, <laughs> curveball. I mean, I'm gonna hit you sideways. Oh, yeah, so it's a right. curveball. Yeah, we call it we call it a blind side hit when you play football. When you just out of nowhere, just get blow. You know what I mean? But oh yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to hit you up, Doug, because, you know, you were touching about, you know, the culture and all that stuff and how, you know, you grew up with your uncles and stuff. You know, I kind of wanted to, you know, get into like you and, you know, as far as how you grew up and, and all that stuff. And I see a lot of me and you, Doug, you know what I mean? We grew up the same. I think you're probably, uh, I don't know, a year younger, a year older. I'm not sure exactly, but um, I know that, you know, we're, we think alike and the music, we were alike in so many ways. And um we you know where does low key come from dog first of all i want you, i remember you telling me but i i don't remember exactly before you get into that how did you get low key where, where does the name low key come from if you don't mind telling me that or is that is that something you want to keep on the wraps or you know could i ask that yeah you, yeah man um my so that just comes back to my first tag back at school. I used to uh, tag Kilo everywhere. Oh, all right. Yeah, so that was like my little... I had heaps, I had heaps of names, bro. You know, real, real ugly ones too. But um, yeah, that, that actually comes from one of my first tags. I used to tag back in grade three, grade four in my books. And just from being a chubby fella, you know, it just it just worked out. Kilo, you yeah, know, yeah. so yeah, so uh, oh, you, you you flipped it. Yeah, there you go. Kilo, no key. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's right, it. Right. That's it. And you know what? You've really you, you've just answered that. And I guess to piggyback off that, um, it just comes down to personality as well. You know, um, yeah. I like to keep to myself. I don't yeah, really like yeah. to talk to heaps of people. You know, I just like to um, 
be with my family and make music. And, Hell yeah. and, and, and those things just keep keep me happy, make me happy, bro. Yeah, and yeah. So that's uh, so, low key. I'm not really familiar exactly like how exactly you grew up, you know, as far as like life wise, you know. Can you give me a little an example of like um, how it was growing up when you were younger, as far as like, you know, what was life like for Loki when he was growing up? You know, maybe you don't have to start when you were like a little kid. If you want, you can tell me as far as a little kid, but like, you know, growing up, you know, third grade and up when you started writing Kilo, you know, uh, what was life like from that growing up into your like teenage years and stuff? I, I guess I can start from the beginning. So um, I was actually born in Gisborne, okay. New Zealand on the East Coast. And about two years later, um, my parents decided to come to Australia to come here for a better life. You know, they were living that gang life back then. Yeah. There was no escape. You know, they were both so deep in it. Yeah. You know, and, um, and not only them, you know, my mum's family, you know, her brother uh, was one of the founders for, um, you know, one of New Zealand's biggest gangs. And he was the president can, of can, uh, Auckland. Can you say the name? Can you say the name? Mungamore. Or are you, you trying to keep... Oh, okay, okay, Mungamore. for sure. I've got family on both sides. Black Power yeah. and, and Mungamore, you know? Oh, okay. You know, when we moved there, I was two years old. So, uh, yeah, we moved here uh, to Australia. We first, we moved to Sydney. We li- we stayed with my... Um, my father's family. And, now, I call, uh, now real quick, I, I do, I call you Toko, but for the people that don't know and don't understand Toko or Uso, could you tell my people, like, as far as your background, you know, like, or, 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 what is Toko? Toko is uh, short for brother. Toko Uwa is a uh, brother. But just for slang, just for sure, we say Toko, Tox, you know. So, yeah, and... Yeah. But- as far as like the um the background like what's 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 uh what's your race so my mom is moldy uh-huh. and my father is tongan okay yeah yeah for sure yeah so um but i grew up more on my tongan side mm-hmm. like we we had um uncles and aunties that are from my mom's side uh yeah. on the moldy side but um yeah in our household we we lent towards the uh our Tongan culture, our Tongan side. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, and you were telling me you were in, in um, Sydney or Australia or something like that. That's where you guys had moved that. Yeah. We moved there first with my, uh, my father's sister and, uh, our, my, my grandparents, his mother and oh, father. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I guess they wanted to move again because they kind of found themselves. Well, my father kind of found himself around that again. What he's just trying to escape. It was over here. Oh, you know, it's so, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we moved up to Queensland in uh, Ipswich, a, a town called Ipswich, 4305, yeah. And that's what I remember. I remember being in Ipswich. I don't remember Sydney. I don't remember New Zealand, you know, um, but I do remember Ipswich. I, I remember being brought up in our small little town. Hell yeah, yeah. that's dope, man. And um, as far as like... Um, did you ever get, did you ever touch, touch in the, uh, I know you, you come from like a big family. Are you the oldest out of your family? Are you the oldest? I, I, or you have brothers that are older than you? Yeah. i got brothers. i got a brother that's older than me. Yeah. All right. Now, as far as that, why, I mean, you don't have to tell me if your brothers were or not, but like, did you ever get into like, did you ever kind of, you know, cause I know when I was growing up, you know, with my brothers and shit, they, they were they were getting into the street life and shit, you know what I mean? And, and they was pushing me to try to get into that. But, you know, yeah, I, I was always, I was the sport man. I was the one that would do the boxing, play football, and then I was into music, you know what I mean? And then we moved away from the, the hood, and we moved to a, a better place. So it was easier for me to get away from that stuff, you know what I mean? Um, but I was still involved in it, kind of. Not, not involved, like, where I was repping hoods, but I mean, I was grown up around it. So like, were you grown up around that stuff too? Well, I mean, obviously you said your parents, but did you try to follow in those steps as well ever growing up? Or did you kind of just stick to music kind of like, you know, maybe in the same route I did? Oh, did you ever follow the footsteps of being like any kind of street shit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not proud of it though. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah, but... yeah, hey, you know, that's life dog, you know what I mean? 
yeah and where i come from i, I try to make a name for myself you know yeah um i was always a good cunt you know o- always good but uh yeah always involved in something you know and plus yeah being from a a housing commission area like that where we were from everyone pretty much knew knew each other you know yeah so yeah i used to get into heaps of shit <laughs> hey so that's that's how it is most of the time man you, you, you know our parents <laughs> you know when your parents grow up a certain way you kind of you know it, it, man apple don't fall far from the tree you know what i mean you mm. grow up seeing something most of the time you're gonna either dip and dab into it unless they move you out the way but you know that street shit always finds its way anywhere even in the good parts bro you know mm. there's always gonna be a good spark but the hood shit don't it, it's everywhere you know what i mean you can't you can't get rid of it but um that's dope man i, I didn't really know much of that um a, a, around like you know what age did you start dipping into the the music shit you know um i remember you kind of telling me a story the other day if you can kind of like touch base on that like how to how the music thing kind of pop off with you like how did you get into start even when it if it even if it wasn't just like starting to make beats just music period how did you start getting into that four or five years old um my football coach was uh on the way to the dump right and he, he drove past our house and he had a drum drum kit on the back of the trailer and my old man seen it and um yeah he waves out to him tells him to come back and asked him what do you want for it and my old man just goes upstairs gets like 50 bucks brings it back down gives it to to him um Dwayne unload it from the trailer it was all broken down too you know it was yeah, it was ready, yeah. to, ready to go to the dump but um no my old man made it made it made it happen you know we took it <laughs> underneath the house he set it up I think we had a snare sitting on the esky um yeah man and uh I was just amazed, you know. It was it was amazing. Like I've never seen anything like it. And it yeah, was one a... man's trash is another man's treasure, bro. You oh know what man! I mean? and, and, and you know what? From from for that since that day, my life will, will never be the same, bro. Like I found yeah. something. Was it just was it just you that got into it, or were you, was your family? Because I know your little brother. You know, shout out to Hound. I know I know he's into the beat making too. But um, yeah. was uh um was was it just you at that time that was kind of like doing the music stuff or like liking it or was your family and kind of getting involved as, as well? Yes, because of my parents being being musicians, we've always had guitars around the house. But I think out of all my family, I was the one that gravitated to towards it the most. You now I, yeah. I was just like, wow. Uh, it like, shows, yeah. <laughs> Like a guitar, like we had keyboards, organs, we had all of that through our house. Hound, I think he was around the same age and like that I was five years old when he turned five, he was already playing the drums. You know, I was just uh, teaching him little bits here and there. But I remember coming back from high school and I could hear someone like smashing the drums. I was like, I thought it was like, you know, one of one of my big cousins or or one of the big <laughs> bros. Oh, my old man, and I come upstairs, and um, he's full, fully jamming, bro, like yeah, yeah. smashing it, doing the rolls. I just sat yeah, on there, yeah. I sat on the bed, bro, and I just watched him. I thought, this is amazing. Like he's only five years old, he really, he really knows how to do it all, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out to my local hound, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Shout out to the homie hound, dog. Uh, yeah. I still gotta get on one of your beats, my boy. Yeah. I don't know which one. You know, for me or <laughs> uh, I, still gotta, I still gotta get on the hound beat dog you know represent yeah but, um, as far as, can you still get on the drums of the day and i and seen the drum it? kit there was a drum kit in uh we, we got a place called uh a store um yeah. and it's called jb hi-fi and they had like uh a few drum kits lined up like yamaha lined up yeah. so i just went in I'll be like a bike, my boy. Once, uh, once you learn, you know, it just takes a couple more time, time to get oh, in there. Bro. And there was a huge line behind me because people wanting to play it. You know, and yeah, I was yeah. just hogging it up, hey, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, that would be dope. I would like to see that, man. I, you know what I mean? That's sick. And, yeah, so after learning how to play the drums, um, see, we, we, I was still playing 
towards Jackson 5, uh, Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, you know, just trying to um, mimic what they're doing. You know? And then yeah. um, it was one day, bro. It was one of my bros, his name's Reckless. Shout out to my dog on, bro. Um, hey, he comes by my house, hey. And he had a he had a tape, and he's like, "Hey, you want to listen to this? I just stole it from my big sister." I was like, "Oh shit, what was this, bro?" He uh, put he pushes play right, and it's that uh, shorty want to be a thug. Oh shit! Park. It, it, yeah. First time I ever heard hip hop, bro. First time I ever heard rap. First time I ever heard somebody cuss, somebody swear on a, on a song, bro. It was Shorty Wanna Be a Thug. That was oh, the yeah. And it was the whole album, bro, but that was the first song that was, you know, how on the tape. Yeah. Wherever it gets yeah. stopped, you just push play. <laughs> bro, and that shit changed my life, man. I never I, I never dreamed to hear something like that, bro, you know? Yeah. So um yeah, that was my first part of getting into uh rap, hip hop, gangster rap, West Coast. Um, and then from that moment, bro, I just try to, I wanted to be a rapper, you know, I put the sticks to the side, man. I was like, oh, I want to be a rapper, you know, and I was, I was writing raps, bro, back in, back in primary school and <laughs> I thought they were mad. I yeah, thought yeah, they were yeah, badass, right. but, uh, nah, there's cringy raps, but, um, yeah. Hey, man, we all go, we all go through that. I, I still remember some parts of my cringy raps. <laughs> <laughs> That's my introduction anyway to to the West Coast rap. I know you, so I saw you were like dipping into the music at that time. So like, when did you start actually now? Was beat something that you started first or um, was the, I know you were writing your rap. So did you start off rapping first before you started making beats? Yeah, Bert. Yep. Dope. So um, when you, when you started rapping, uh, when what how what, did you like did you put out music did you have like stuff as far as recording like music and putting like eps out albums or anything like that nah man just those songs you can drink up to like half of the songs we did were i, I was drunk bro you know just having fun not even taking yeah. it serious but we started also, on the you... tape decks oh okay 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 yeah yeah just recording off that um oh, using Playing with the homies, have fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and and you know that story. Um, but it wasn't until I got into my late teens, I think I was about 17. Um, went down to Sydney because my cousins um they got a, a band, a family band, the Kamis, and um they're well known in the Polynesian community. Um they've been out for years, but they've been doing it since little kids, bro. You know, um yeah. And they had an album that they wanted me to feature on. And I was an amateur, bro. Like, I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I could rap. I, I've never got in front of a mic or, or even been in the studio before, bro. Yeah, know? yeah. So I flew down there. They take me to the studio uh, the next day. And, um, yeah, that was my first time around it, you know, just around recording equipment, a proper mic, proper headphones, um, someone telling you it's, you know, trying to cue you in. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was my first time recording that. So after that, um, because I was just watching every night, just watching my older cousins. I was so inspired from what I've seen and that I wanted to do it seriously because I knew, you know, I, I had something to say, you know, and yeah. um, the people at the drink ups, like what I was saying and, and the stories that I was, uh, rapping about so i ended up going to get a mic it was only a 50 dollar mic bro but hey it was a starter got me a little yeah, interface fucking got me a um a computer it was, it was like a budget as computer but i was able to plug the mic in and get my vocals recorded bro so yeah that was my late teens bro oh yeah, yeah. so when it went when did you start getting into the beats because i remember you yeah, I, you actually showed me some old footage of you rapping and shit on, you know, with your homies and shit. Uh, <laughs> when 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 did you actually get into like the beat making? Because sure. a lot of people don't know, like a lot of my boys that know about your beats, they don't know you rap too. You right. know what I mean? And I know you don't like to really push the rap stuff. You know what I mean? But you should. Hey. I think you should. 
You know what I mean? I, I love the sound. You got that old school, like, <laughs> like I feel, you remind me of like that old school Method Man type flow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, it sounds like some Wu Tang shit, you know, hip hop, West Coast. Like, I like the way you be busting. But um, as far as, you know, the beats, because a lot of people know you for the beats, when did you start getting into the beat making? Around the same time, in my late teens. So this time that I'm recording, bro, because I was ripping beats off YouTube. My infamous place was SoundClick. Do you remember that place? Yeah, SoundClick. SoundClick, yeah, I used to, bro. I used to yeah. download the beats, bro, and then just <laughs> just rap over them, you know? Yeah. And it, SoundClick was like the very first beat stars, yeah. Yeah, yeah, beat stars. Yeah, that's right. It was the very first one. Yeah, SoundClick. So that's where I used to get my beats from. And um, yeah, it was wasn't until I started hearing other artists from where I'm from, like ha- rapping over the same beats. I was like, "You're kidding me, bro!" Yeah, like, we're gonna look we're gonna look like amateurs, you know. So yeah, that's the only thing that sucks about when you rapping on like when you start getting beats from like these like websites, you start realizing a lot of other people had already downloaded them too. You know? Yeah, what I mean? bro. Yeah, so that's what happened, uh, and. Also, like when we used to go and perform, I had to be fully drunk, bro. I had to be wasted before oh, I could man. walk on stage, bro. Like I was that that shy, bro. I didn't want to get up in front of all those people, you know. So, hey, that's me, dog. That's exactly how I was. So I couldn't damn. even record. I couldn't even record in a room with people in it. Like damn. the engineer had to get out. Oh. The engineer would have to press record and walk out. And imagine when I, when I fuck up, bro. How many times he had to come in come and back. out, and you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, but yeah, that's how I was at the very beginning, dog. But now, folks, I could record with a hundred people in the room. I'd re- I would choose not to do it, but yeah, that's yeah, cool. Ain't no thing, no. Yeah, so that's tight. So that's where I used to get the beats from, and um, yeah, I hated being on stage, brother. Yeah, you know, I hated being in front of all those people. So after like many a shows, man, I had to um find where where I was comfortable, where we can keep moving. Cause I had a I had a group too. I wouldn't call it a group, I just call it some brothers from the from the same place where I'm from that we all grew up together. We just started making music. And then um yeah, we started getting shows around. You know, our, our music started getting around. You know, it started from parties and then those parties went to other parties, like our songs just went around. So people were just asking for us to perform open mic nights or they'll get us down to, to open up shows, bro. So that was a cool experience, but the whole time, like the whole week, I'll be just stressing about being on stage, man. I just hated it. And then, um, yeah, probably after our last show, because my bros, they love being on stage. You know, they just loved it. Not to dip into your personal life too much, but were you already, did you already know who you were you with your wife at that time? Or did you know her yeah, already? Yeah. Yep. Was she was she going to your was she going to your shows and stuff? She was driving all of us. You know, oh, that's you what's know, up. You know, Shout out to Miss Low Key putting yeah, it down yeah. and putting it work. Hey. That's what's up. Yeah, bro. She that's she drove up. us to every single show, bro. Wait around, you know, because after the show, we'll be drinking up with the other crews. You know, so she'll be waiting uh, in the car. Three o'clock, four o'clock in die, the morning. I'd rather die right there, right there, my jean. That's right. She was there through through it all, bro. Hell yeah. No, that's cool, man. I mean, just and, and, and now to see where you're at now, like, man, she, she knows that whole process, you know, and that's, that's, I'm sure that's what makes your guys' bond even more, dog. You know what I mean? Like, she's been there since day one from, you know, the start of it. Yeah. So, from the very shout start. Shout out to Mr. Low Key for that, man. That's yeah. dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, once I found that I didn't want to be on stage anymore, I found, you know what? Just stick to producing. That's what you want to do. That's what you, uh, you're you good at. At least you can sit there, let the boys, when it's time for shows, let the boys hit the stage. You don't have to do nothing. So I was able to kick back. And I found that by doing that, West, by just taking that lane over for myself, there's less stress. Man, that's so dope, man, to hear that shit. You know what I mean? I mean, I've always knew some of the stuff, you know what I mean? But when you get in depth and you talk about it like that, man, it's crazy, bro. Like... I see where you're at, man. And it's to know that you started off with the rap shit. You know what I mean? A lot of these people don't know that. You know what I mean? 
And I think you should come out with more of your rap shit, you know, because I've seen you come out on a couple of tracks or, you know, just shit that you show me personally. And it's dope, man. You got some dope shit. Your flow's crazy, bro. Jeez. You know what I mean? I like the way you be killing that shit, dog. So Thanks, that's what's up, G. I really like that shit, dog. Um, and the beats, bro. I mean, you know, um, to kind of like sum everything up, bro, as far as, you know, I know your sound, bro, really really comes from that west coast now <clears throat> i i don't know if you kind of answered this at all but to kind of close this out tell me how somebody who's a whole day ahead of me you know what i mean you're you're literally one day ahead of us um how does someone like you who's so far away from where i come from from where i'm from which is like what you guys would consider LA, California. How, how, how does someone like you that's so far away get in so tuned and master the sound that I love, which would be that gangsta West Coast rap? Like, were you just, I mean, obviously you like the music. I mean, but was it like, who, who were your biggest influences, dog, as far as when it came to making these beats and, making that that west coast sound bro like where did it come from how or who how did it start or who were your main influences i mean how, how does someone like you get to where you where you start making this shit like where's the beginning of that death row I, mean, I know you got okay death row death row so that's what i was saying when my bro bring around his sister's tape that was the first yeah. time i ever heard that ever heard gangster rap you know, Shorty Wanna Be A Thug, that's my first hip-hop song I ever heard, bro, ever. Um, so it was from from that point on, um, listening to Doggy Style, you know, yeah. listening to Machiavelli, really started diving deep. Dr. Dre, like, I was going back. You know, yeah. like, where did, where, where, where did this shit come from? You know, yeah. so, and plus I had older bros as well. That would yeah. have their CDs and cassette tapes left at my mom's house because of they we had a party, you know. So I was able to like go grab their tapes and and have a listen, and it was just a thrill to me, man, and just to hear what they had to say, because I I felt I felt like when I listened to some Puck songs, right, I related in the kind of way, you know. I I yeah, related yeah. because I was young too, you know, mm -hmm. and some of those situations. I felt he got me through yeah. some situations that I was going through at the time. When I heard his music, I was, yeah, I just felt like he's like a big bro. So I, I guess it comes from that um, where I get my sound from. And I, just for the love of it too, of the West Coast sound, of the West Coast culture, like the place where you're from. You now yeah. I always want to visit. I've always wanted to visit California, you know, and you want to visit the West Coast gangster rap Mecca hotspot, my boy. That's right. You want to come where it was born. And it's still yeah, a dream. Yeah, I feel it. Still a dream of mine. It's crazy when, um, you know, I get a few artists that think I'm actually from there, but, and they're from there. You know, when yeah. I say, oh, I'm from Australia, like, out with I the was king, shocked. <laughs> out with the kangaroos. You know, like, yeah, man, out with the boomerangs and all. One of the um, the biggest things um, when you mentioned Death Row, I remember the biggest things that were tripping me out for as far as Death Row when I, when I think about the Death Row days when Snoop Dogg when he dropped Doggy Style. You remember that fucking cover called the cover art? Boy, yeah, I man. thought that was like a Playboy to me, dog. I was like, oh my god, boo. I'd be like sneaking that shit and be like, hey, check this shit out, boo. You see that shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> if I remember the cover where it was like a dog and a girl dog going into the doghouse. Yeah. On doggy style, that that tripped me out. I remember when when that came out, I was like, like those cover arts, bro, was so crazy. And they come to think about it, now that I'm thinking about the cover art, I remember I went to church one day with my homie and my little homie, and my little homie wore that shirt to to church for one day, the doggy style album. It was the actual shirt with the album cover. I was like, what are you thinking? Why would you wear that shit that hurt? You know what I mean? But yeah, man, those are good times, bro, that you definitely catch the West Coast sound, bro. Anyone listens to your shit, 
everyone knows, bro. Your shit knocks, bro. Your shit has that West Coast sound, bro. If no one seen your face, seen who you were, nothing, bro, and they just heard your beats, dog, they would think you're from out here, bro. I mean, yeah. it's crazy when it's so crazy to me to see somebody so far away and and be more in tune with the west coast to some of these people that are here from the west coast i see these young new generations bro and they know nothing about this old school west coast but here's somebody from another complete country far away and is more west coaster than you dog how does that happen you know what i mean <laughs> but that tells you bro the west coast is alive and branch out we might not be bumping on the radios like we used to be as far as that old school west coast sound but it's still alive in other places it's alive in Japan. It's alive in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, China, Philippines. I mean, we're everywhere, dog. West Coast lives forever, dog. Forever. Rest in peace to the greats. Rest in peace, Pac. You know, rest in peace to Nipsey. Rest in peace to all of these, the, the older OGs, Nate Dog. You know what I mean? There's, there's, it's nonstop, dog. We got, we, we got legends in the game. You know what I mean? And that sound that you create, bro. Yeah, a lot of it comes from those people, you know what I mean? And man, salute to you, dog, for you know the beats that you put out, bro, and all that work that you do, dog. Like when I when I say you're my mentor, my boy, I really mean that because yeah. you know, you I've never gotten in depth with my music the way I get into it now. You know, and uh I see the way you move and do your shit with your music and how you fucking lay your shit out. And I see how you try to implement that in my shit, you know. And you see the professionalism, you know what I mean? So I just want to be like that too. You know what I mean? I want to, I want my shit to look like yours. I want my website to look catchy. I want, you know, all my, my beats to sound dope. You know, that's why I fuck with two people is you and the homie chops dog. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, that sound has always been me dog. I tried to do the hip hop shit. I tried to, you know, uh, go underground. I try to, you know, but West Coast is me, dog. That's what I grew up on. You know, when you're talking about the Death Road days, dog, it's exactly what I remember. Tupac, Snoop. You know, I remember De uh, um, Suge Knight. I remember being with my dad in the middle of the living room watching the Soul Train Music Awards, fool, and Snoop Dogg and Dr. J rolling up on stage with an Impala, yeah. fool. They rolled up on an Impala, and they did, like, their old-school songs, and my dad recorded that on a little videotape, fool. Like, he recorded that off the TV. And I remember seeing that shit, dog, and just being like, hell yeah. You know, like, that's that's us. You know, that's West Coast shit. You know what I mean? And, man, forever live the West Coast, dog. That's just, you know, that's I, it, I, it really means a lot to me, as weird as it is to say. But it means a lot to me to see that style and that sound still be alive and be alive so more so far away you know what i mean and just like you said it's your dream to come out here it's my dream to go out there i don't want to eat no yeah. kangaroos or anything <laughs> i don't want to eat i don't <laughs> i don't want to eat no kangaroos and stuff but i'm down to eat the island food you know what i mean i'm down to try your shit but my, my dreams to go out there my boy i want to go out there and you know visit visit your guys spots take a trip to new zealand and kick it with mr sick you know get in the studio and Rap of my brothers, my boy. You know what I mean? That's that's my dream, dog. So yeah. just like it's your dream to come out here, it's my dream to go out there. You know what I mean? So again, dog, salute to everything, dog, that you do in the music and you do for the West Coast sound and keeping it live and keeping the beats banging. Salute to you for doing the, you know, the music as far as for me and always getting my shit done. You know what I mean? I appreciate that, my boy. But um yeah, my dog, this has been dope. You know what I mean? I appreciate, you know, you taking the time out of your day and kind of just chopping it up with me about this stuff. Yeah, and a salute to all the people, dog, too, that, you know, that were in your life, dog, that kept the music alive, you know, and then all the artists you worked for, like, you, I mean, that you would worked with and created beats for and, you know, still doing to this day, you know, for some of them, you know. Um, so salute to all of them. Jack, um, Jack Ellen. You know, Mr. Sick, E, me, you know, shout out to fucking all them peeps, dog. You know what I mean? I've worked with all those dudes, too. And, you know, salute to everybody, dog. And, you know, like you said, man, just keep doing the music. Keep grinding. Keep pushing. You know, be consistent. Keep throwing it out there, dog. 
you ain't got to hang nothing up. Dog. You hang them up when you're ready. You know what I mean? If you want That's to. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, as far as, as long as you're around and I'm around, bro, we still going to be pushing music, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and until, day. until we in the studio together. That's the main goal. You know what I mean? Oh, there'll be a magical time, bro. Oh, for sure, my G. Nah. I think that we could call, we could wrap this one up, dog. I think All this is right. a good little... Yeah, little, yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Toko. Yeah. So, what you got going on the rest of the day? You gonna be kicking it, chilling? I got a couple designs to throw up. So, um, while I got the time, I'm just gonna throw them up. Yeah, yeah. Some, um, so. some crew next, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, my doggo. Much love, Ofala Yatu. Yeah, Ofala Yatu, my G. You know what it. Is. Uh, yes. So next time, the next, next one time. Yeah. Be, in, be on lookout. LOS the four coming soon. Ooh, Empire wait. coming soon. Yeah. I got that jingle dropping this Friday. We got mad shit coming, man, with my boy Loki. Man, we even we we already talking about doing a uh a special EP too. You know, I won't tell you the topic or anything, but we will tell you, that's man, we're so ahead of y'all motherfuckers. Y'all need to catch up. Yeah. And, and catch up with some authentic shit too. Don't just put out that weak shit. Put out <laughs> yeah. that real West Coast shit. You know what I mean? Because you know how we do it out here. We 100% authentic culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. We really be free. Well, yes. Funk gang. You know what it is. You man. know what it is. Yeah. 